Well guys, tonight's the night I've been waiting for for quite some time. Tonight's the night I finally get to shoot with my Skywatcher Star Adventure GTI. And we're going to be putting it through its paces tonight. We're going to see how well it guides right out of the box. But before we get into it guys, if you have missed my other videos, because this is the third video in my Skywatcher GTI series, we did an unboxing video, I also installed the ADM saddle upgrade, and I also showed you what 11 pounds of payload might look like on top of the Skywatcher GTI. My second video was polar alignment and what you should do before you head out into the field. And tonight we finally get to use this awesome tiny mount. And some of the equipment I'll be using tonight is the ZWO294MM Pro mono camera and my favorite refractor of all time the william optics z73 apo refractor it's just so fun to shoot with i love it and a very familiar auto guider setup that i'm sure everyone knows this is the zwo 30 millimeter guide scope along with the 120 mm mini guide camera and I'll be controlling this all through the ASA Air Mini. And I think I'll be starting out with aggression settings of 35, because I usually end up around there anyways when I'm tuning them out. And what are we shooting tonight? Well, since there's no moon, I mean, it's the perfect night, guys. It's clear, I have no moon. I want to shoot something in broadband. And I'm thinking M78 in Orion. And I'm going to try and get that wispy part of Bernard's Loop and also the Reflection Nebula. So I guess the only thing we need to do, by the looks of it, is get on out there. All right, guys, imaging's underway. My uh, Star Adventure GTI is start adventuring up. Check out how dark it is out here. Oh my gosh. It is so beautiful right now. Orion just over my shoulder. And for those of you guys that are going, hey, what about the Askar 103 F4 OSC test? Don't worry guys. I got gotcha. you. Check this out. It's right over there. Okay. Won't be this video, but definitely a video coming up. I was just thinking right now, this is my first time shooting M78 because usually when it appears in the sky, I can't see it because of all the clouds, right? And then it becomes spring and Orion is too low for me to actually capture it. So this is pretty darn cool, especially since my other scope is capturing 2170 right now, the Angel Nebula. First time I'm capturing it too. That's insane. It's 11.30 and it's still clear outside. So I decided to point my GTI up towards Leo and I'm getting a head start on galaxy season. I'm getting the Leo triplet with that. Uh, my Ask R103 is actually pointed at Mark Harian's chain and we're just imaging through the night, guys. Oh my god. Crazy. Crazy clear night. I don't know about you guys, but having a clear night like last night is really good for the soul. And I really needed it, especially after the consecutive cloud cover that we've had this winter. All right. Well, before we get into it, I have a few things to mention for you. Uh, first off, my polar alignment accuracy I got was at 0.22. I just wanted to point that out just so you know what I was guiding at. Also, the knobs on the Star Adventure, these ones here, 
when you're polar aligning, it feels like you're polar aligning a really big mount. What I really appreciated was I didn't have to alter how I move knobs on my larger mount, I guess is what I want to say. It just felt really natural and I was able to polar, polar align quickly, for sure. I set my guider at two seconds and that seemed to work out really well. It's what I set my EQ6R at and I get really good auto guiding from it that way. And my guiding actually stayed at about one or greater for most of the night. So I was really impressed with the performance on the mount itself due to that. Now it did error out at times, but all mounts do. But what's important is how fast it recovers from said error, right? And the Star Adventure took about maybe one minute to two minutes to recover from that. I mean, I would expect that from a small mount like this. Honestly, if you're on site, you might as well just turn off the guiding and turn it back on really quick. That'll solve all your issues altogether. And I did start my night out with 35 and 35 for my aggression settings. As the night progressed, I actually settled on 45 and 40 for my aggression settings, and that seemed to work out the best. So now let's take a look at our data and we're going to go pixel peeping guys. We're going to look for issues right now. I have my subframes here. This is just one sub of each target and I have M78 and also the Leo triplet. And I have an example of good guiding from it and also bad guiding. So let's take a look at that. Here is a single sub exposure from M78. And here is an example of good guiding. So we're going to go in super far, farther than like anyone should actually look at a photo, okay? But you know, some people do. I don't, but some people do. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at this. So here it is in the corners. And these stars look pretty good, right? They're nice, they're round. And it's really impressive for a little mount like this, right? Let's take a look at the other side of things. Here's the left-hand side. Still really good here, right? It's not perfect, but honestly, we're up on the stars right now. So keep that in mind. But it still looks good to me. Here is the bottom left-hand corner. Still looking good, and these are super tiny stars. So the mount is definitely doing its job. And here's the bottom right hand corner here. All right, and these are typical good guiding results, I think, that uh, you'd be able to get from a 30, mi 30 millimeter guide scope. All right, so let's take a look at a photo that had guiding that erred a little bit. And here is the Leo triplet. Actually turned out really good. Look at all this detail I got in M66. That's actually a lot for Z73. But as you can see here, uh, we've got some streaking, right? And honestly, the streaking isn't bad. So if we're going to look at it at normal people level, you're not going to really notice it at all. And with the tools we have nowadays, since we have like Blur Exterminator, Blur Exterminator would just fix this right up. So we don't really have to worry about it. But if you were to select all of the sharpest pictures that you can get, you would probably throw this away. I wouldn't throw this away. I would use it in my stack just because I'm trying to expose the galaxies themselves. So. Same can be said with my M78 photo. I'm going to stack 100% of my data because none of it was super terrible, right? It all was like this. Even the error photos were very minuscule to me, but I understand some of you have different needs, but 
keep in mind that this mount is under $700 for the mount itself. You can't expect it to perform like a AM3, a AM5 EQ6R. But for its purpose, for me, it's a secondary mount so I can use some of my older equipment. It fits the bill perfectly. Well, I guess the only thing left is to enjoy my photos of M78 and also the Leo triplet. Well guys, that's all I had for you today. Hopefully you found this helpful and I guess we'll see you in the next one. Peace.